Hello, everyone. Lawrence Fleming here with another quick update. There's so much going on in the world that uh, I thought I better throw this one out quickly while everybody's watching the news. It should be obvious that we should never fight without God by our side. And we should never run from a battle if God tells us to stay in it. It's obvious our government is failing in this particular aspect. I mean, if you're watching the news, it's obvious to even the layman that our government messed up. And it's unfortunate, but it's happened before. I'm not a Middle East expert. I know a lot about it, but I am ex-military. As a Vietnam vet, I know what it's like for the government to turn tail and run. Many lives were lost back then because of the decision that they made. And we're seeing history repeat itself now with Afghanistan. It's kind of two wars going on. ISIS that hates the world. And then there's the country in Afghanistan where they don't like ISIS. There have been a number of suicide bombs just go off. Three that killed Americans and others that are around, trying to prevent you know, at least 10,000, up to 30,000 Americans and others that were sympathetic to our cause from leaving the country. Why? So they could kill them. That's the kind of people that ISIS is. And ISIS, like all the other proxies, are just you know funding or being funded by Iran. Just like Vietnam, where we're fighting somebody else in Vietnam, we weren't fighting the Vietnamese. You can't win a battle if you're not going to take it to the home country. All right, with all this going on, Christians should be excited for these times. If you're not a Christian, stay to the end, and I'll tell you what you can do to become one. Now, if you like this video, click like. If you want to hear more, please subscribe. It really does help YouTube know how to place it. And of course, click the bell icon and you know when I release a new video. I never ask for funds on my channel because God has been gracious to me to help me out with this. So you can help me, though, by sharing this and other videos with those that need God's help. That's all I ask for now. Oh, and your prayers. So let's go ahead and get started. A coward dies a thousand times before his death, but the valiant tastes the death but once. It seems to me most strange that men should fear, seeing that death, a necessary end, will come when it will come. A famous quote, but this one's not from the Bible. This is from William Shakespeare in Julius Caesar. Now it's not from the Bible, but it is a quote from a wise storyteller. And it kind of describes the way I feel about our country right now. Not the people in it, but those running it. And when we look at the Bible and all the wars that it contains, those that were with God, repentant and obedient, victory was always there for them. It's kind of one of the reasons that Israel is back with us today, because they stay with God. Now, you wander away and you come back, God's right there. You wander away for 50 years, you come back, it's as if you were never gone. The prodigal son type story. God is always waiting for us. He wants us to be happy. And he gave us the spirit to comfort us and to strengthen us when we, that is man, think we can do something without God. The results are at best failure and at worst death. The alignment of the stars 
and the planets back in 2017, the Revelation 12 sign set in motion the end times. The alignment of the countries and the powers around the world are also a sign of the end times. I think it's time for you to tighten up your armor of God and to sharpen your sword of truth. It's about to get real out there. We don't know how much of this we will see before the rapture. But what we are seeing is bad enough. Remember those in Thessalonica thought that they missed the rapture because times were tough. And Paul had to tell them, no, you didn't, in his second letter to him. Sometimes times do get tough. But when we look at all the other things happening, the things that are getting tough now are predicted in the Bible. We're living in prophetic times. You need to be ready. And now is the time to put your trust in God. Do you know God? Do you know Jesus Christ personally yet? If not, you need to invite Jesus into your heart. You can speak directly to him. He will hear you. But you have to really mean it because he can see into your heart. And if you mean it, you can be saved right now, in fact. You're not going to be saved by your works. There's nothing you can do to get to heaven. There's nothing you can do after you're going to heaven to make your stay in heaven better. God already has it all lined up for us. It's his free gift of salvation to us. And there's a simple prayer. But mean it from your heart. Don't just say the words. Repeat after me. Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I repent of my sinful ways and ask you to come into my heart. I accept your free gift of salvation that you paid for with your blood on the cross. I want to be a Christian. I want to be born again. I want to have eternal life. Now, if you prayed that and meant it, and you prayed it with confidence, that Christ hears you, you're a Christian. That's it. There's nothing else you need to do. You don't need to be baptized. Oh, that's a sign that you can do for people, but it's not necessary to be saved. You don't have to go out and feed the poor. It's a great thing to do, but not necessary to be saved. Jesus went through a lot of pain for us so that we don't have to go through anything like he did. That doesn't mean we're going to be living a perfect life without any problems. But he's always there for us. And the spirit that will indwell you will help you. It's known as the comforter. It will make your life easier in some ways, and in others maybe a little tougher because you're going to have some work to do. We've got to save the people on this earth before it's too late. We're running out of time. The watchers now are out there. They're looking. We've had predictions for pro probably every month this year and some last year where they're trying to predict the day. And I know what you're going to tell me. You know, no one knows the day or the hour. Well, that's really talking about the second coming. But if we know the second coming, we could figure out the first coming, or the first returning, I should say. He's already been here and died for us. But he's going to come back for the rapture, and he's going to come back at the end of the seven-year period. So we should be looking up right now. So until we meet in the skies, God bless.